Now you've probably heard those awesome outside the jazzy sounds played by fusion progressive rock and jazz guitar heroes like Guthrie Govan, Tom Quayle, Frank Gambale, uh, Sean Lane, Alan Holtzworth and Pliny to name a few. Now all of these guitarists use an extensive palette of musical assets to pleasure our ears and probably leaving us with our jaws fell to the floor. One of those musical assets is the altered dominant scale. And even when playing this scale up and down the neck without applying sensible rhythm or interval playing, the scale sounds really awesome and establish that, establishes that typical jazz and fusion sound. And even for metal, it has its applications, which we'll see later on in the video. So here it is, the altered scale crystal clear. Now to understand what an altered scale is, we first have to understand what a dominant scale is. Well, a straightforward dominant scale is a major scale with a flat 7 degree and is also known as the Mixolydian mode. It's the fifth mode of the major scale. Now this scale is outlined and defined by the tonic, the major third and the minor seventh. And you find the same characteristics in the dominant chord, which is also outlined by the same three notes. And the altered scale, or altered dominant scale, is a dominant scale where all the notes are altered except for the three notes that define the dominant chord, namely the root, the major third and the flat seventh. Now, you can imagine that all those alterations create a lot, create a lot of tension and dissonance. And this is exactly what the purpose is of this scale to create a very noticeable tension which has to resolve to a consonant and tensionless sound. The altered scale is a storm before calm. Now notice that the tonic, the major third and the minor seventh have stayed unchanged and so the chord tones and extensions in this scale are the tonic, the flat nine, sharp nine, the major third which is unchanged, the flat five, the sharp five or flat thirteenth, uh, and the flat seventh. So the altered scale contains all the altered notes which are used to create tension. The flat nine, the sharp nine, the flat five, the sharp five, the flat thirteen. And these notes are dissonant and need to resolve to something. And without resolving, in most cases, the altered scale has no purpose in musical context and would sound weird and disconnected. Now, all this will make the scale perfect for playing over uh, dominant chords, uh, flat 5 and sharp 5 chords, flat 9 and sharp 9 chords, and flat 13 chords. It will give you a typical modern outside jazzy sound in all kinds of scenarios. Now, dominant chords where the 5th, the ninth, or both are raised or lowered are called altered chords and obviously are suited for the altered scale as an improvisation asset. Now the altered chord is written as a chord name with the abbreviation ALT after the root name. So a G7 sharp 9 chord could be written as a G altered chord, but also a G7 flat 9 chord is also a G altered chord. So it's really left to the interpretation of the musician if a G altered chord becomes a G7 sharp 5 flat 9 chord or a G7 flat 5 sharp 9 chord. The alteration in the chord creates a chromatic leading tone for smooth chord transitions, for instance, from the fifth altered chord to the tonic. Now, here's an example of the scale integrated in a straightforward improvisation in E minor. And over the B alt altered chord, I will play an altered scale without doing anything smart or fancy. going to see that this scale goes by more than one name, due to its origin and similarities with other scales. The altered scale or altered dominant scale is also called the super Locrian mode. And the name Locrian mode points towards the seventh mode of the major scale. It's a minor scale with a diminished fifth and flattened second degree. Now the super Locrian mode arises when the melodic minor scale is started on the seventh note. In other words, 
The Super Locrian mode is the seventh mode of the melodic minor scale. So for instance, the B altered scale, or B Super Locrian scale if you like, contains the notes of the C melodic minor scale, but the tonal center is B. Now this creates a common Locrian scale, but with a major third, the B Super Locrian scale. And there's even a third name for this scale. The altered scale has a bit in common with the, the diminished scale. Um, and also with the whole tone scale. The first five notes of the scale are exactly the same as the half whole tone diminished scale or dominant diminished scale. Whereas the last part of the scale has similarities with the whole tone scale. Now, For this reason the altered scale is also referred to as diminished whole tone scale. A combination of the diminished and the whole tone scale. So now we have three names for this remarkable scale. The altered dominant scale, or short the altered scale. Super Locrian mode, or super Locrian scale. And the diminished whole tone scale. Now let's look at some scale patterns on the neck of the guitar. Now as you know by now, the altered scale is extracted from the melodic minor scale. So if you already know the melodic minor scale patterns, then you're in luck. The only thing you have to take into account is that the tonic of the scale is now the major 7th. So if you want to play the B altered scale, just go for the C melodic minor scale and keep in mind that the tonic is B being the major 7th of the C melodic minor scale. Now for the ones that are not familiar with the melodic minor scale patterns, there is a way to learn the scale fast by studying the scale over one octave, and then transpose it over the next octave of the neck of the guitar. This is something you can do with any scale, not just the altered scale. So take a look at this small part of the altered scale pattern, which spans exactly an octave. And it's easy to learn and to remember. Now, transpose this pattern to the next octave uh, on the next two strings. And then again over the last two strings. Now after this is much easier to combine these three similar forms to one whole scale pattern. And as you can see, it's a great way to learn scale patterns of any scale. Here are four patterns for the altered scale. Some of them uh, have three notes per string for nice and quick runs. And here are two patterns with position shifts over three octaves with a convenient fingering with the use of slides. Now both altered scale and diminished scale are used over dominant chords. The altered scale has only one difference with the eighth note counting half whole diminished scale, also known as the dominant diminished scale, by the way. Now where the diminished scale has a perfect fifth and a major thirteenth, the altered scale has just a flat 13th. Now, the logical consequence of all this is that both scales have different purposes. The altered scale is used for augmented and flat 13 chords, whereas the uh, diminished scale is used for dominant 13 chords. Now before uh, soloing with this scale, keep in mind that it's best practice to let the licks resolve into a chord tone in order to sound like you know what you're doing. If not, the lick could sound uh, as if you made a mistake. Now one way to improvise with the altered scale is using arpeggios that you can find in this scale. And one of the possibilities is using the dominant 7 arpeggio of the diminished 5th. In fact, this is based on a tritone substitution. In G altered, this would be the D flat 7 arpeggio. Now notes of the D flat uh, 7 chord are D flat, F, A flat, uh, C flat, which is enharmonically the same as B, by the way.
Now another arpeggio you can find in this altered scale is the minor major 7 chord uh, on the second degree of the altered scale. And this is also the tonic of the melodic minor scale, of which the altered scale is extracted. Now like the name suspects, the minor major 7 chord is a minor chord with a major 7 on top of it. Beautiful chord. So over the G7 or G altered scale, uh, altered chord, sorry, we can use a A flat minor uh, major 7 arpeggio. Now this arpeggio outlines the G7 flat 9 flat 13 chord. So here's a very straightforward example in a 2 5 1 progression using these two arpeggios. Use this to get started with this way of thinking and playing. Sometimes the 4 chord in, uh, in the 5th bar of a 12 bar blues progression is preceded by the tritone substitution of the dominant chord. So in A major blues, the D7 or D9 chord is sometimes preceded by the E flat 7 or E flat 9 chord, which is the tritone substitution of the A7 chord, just like this. E flat 9 has an awful lot in common with the A altered chord, so it's no wonder that you can use the A altered scale when improvising towards that D7 chord in the 5th bar of a 12 bar blues, like this. Notes of the melodic minor scale have something dark and eerie when placed in a metal music context. The altered scale, the seventh mode of the melodic minor scale, as said before, is a very dissonant and disconnected sounding scale and probably Lucifer's favorite. So here is a metal riff that incorporates the altered dominant scale. And then combining rock stuff with jazz will end up with fusion or fusion rock that sounds more sophisticated and a little advanced. So there's no doubt that the altered scale is one of those scales that has this modern sound to it, and the applications are diverse. From typical jazzy, mellow, bluesy stuff to rock and to even to dark, eerie metal riffs. Now the scale is not that easy to incorporate though. It takes some time to get used to it and uh, to get used to the sound and find ways to let it sound like a logical asset in your improvisation. Now, the main goal is to let the altered licks in this scale resolve, otherwise the scale will sound weird and people may think you're playing the wrong notes. Although in the metal riff I played, uh, there was no resolving at all. Uh, and it was all about just keeping the tension instead of resolving it. So just explore this concept and try to get familiar with it. And I hope this was clear for you and you can use this to improve your sound. Well, I see you next time in a Q Jam Tracks video or backing track. Bye for now.